The daily struggles I go through outweigh the small moments of joy I have. My little pony has helped, but it's still just another thing to give my hopes up on. Every time I see the show or one of the ponies on a fan site, I recoil a little bit at the bright colors, the joyful faces of the ponies, and the peaceful scenery of their world. It's so hard to look at that beautiful world, having it so close to my grasp. Only to be stopped by my computer screen. When I feel sad, I walk. When I feel tired, I walk. When I feel like walking, I walk. Walking has become my second life in a sense. I spend at least half my day outside along the crumbling sidewalks and decaying suburbs. I live my life one day at a time. A good portion of those days are uneventful, always falling into the same routine. I wake up, walk to work, work, walk home. Then I'll bum around until I go to bed. Sometimes I'll hang with my few friends, while other times I'll just play video games or watch My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Living in a dying city isn't very fun or interesting. This city was once full of life and color, but now, now most of the houses are sagging. The businesses sit empty and abandoned, and the open fields lay barren of the once great factories that helped drive the local economy. I never saw the city during those times, but I have seen pictures. My mother started painting once everything crumbled beneath her feet, making the sad scenery before her look beautiful. Her masterpiece is of an open field that yielded to a parking garage. And over it, she drew this amazing rainbow. It's by far my favorite picture. And I guess that's why I like Rainbow Dash the most out of all the other ponies. Her colors, the amazing sonic rainbow. All of that reminds me of her picture. Today, as usual, I had walked to work. It was the same shit, just a different day. I watched the same people come into the store grab their merchandise, pay for it, and then walk out with bags in tow. Now, living in this area, I see trash all the time. Boxes and plastic bags littered the streets and empty fields. Rarely would I see a cardboard box that isn't crushed in one way or another. It's just sitting there, sad and alone, among the broken concrete and overgrown grass. It doesn't move or stand out as if it were special. It's just an ordinary brown cardboard box. Inside is a sleeping, filly, rainbow dash. There is not a physical or a mental or extraterrestrial way how this could be here. How she could be here in my gloomy, dark, and horrible world. The very first thought that runs through my mind, besides the initial filly rainbow dash in a box, is... Who in the world would give up a Philly Rainbow Dash? My heart explodes twice. I have not smiled like this in years. Hi there. What are you doing out here? I am so not sure how to handle this situation. Do I take her home? Do I call somebody? Uh, who would I even call? she would probably be taken off to some lab and experimented on. Honestly, I only have one choice here. She has no clue what's going on, where she is, who I am, or anything else. She's beyond the word lost. She's misplaced. Right now, there is nothing else that matters to me. My despair, my sore feet, and painful heart all go unnoticed, as nothing else can come remotely close to the feeling I have right now. This joy that I'm experiencing at this moment as I lay awake on my couch. She is here. She is real. 
Right now, she's my little pony. She is my little Dashy. It's only been about four months since I brought the young rainbow Dash into my home. I did what little research I could on the matter, but, but I've come to no conclusions. I really have no idea why she's here, and quite frankly, I don't care. These few months with her have been the most amazing time of my life. She has opened my heart up to love and joy, amongst other things. Right now, she sits next to me on the couch as I watch TV. She seems to enjoy the morning cartoons on the local stations, and I've kind of come to enjoy them too. She acts a lot like a young kid would, but then again, why wouldn't she? Another amazing thing is she's been learning to talk. Now, I'm not much of a teacher, or for that matter, a parent, but I'm doing my best to help her learn to speak and read. I've decided since I actually don't know her actual birth date, I'm going to make the day I found her her birthday, September the 17th. And oddly enough, that's the very same day that the second season of My Little Pony aired last year. I quit watching the show after Dashy came into my life. There was no reason for me to continue. And honestly, I don't have a lot of time to myself anymore. She's able to fully communicate with me now, as well as read English. And she's even started to learn how to write with, you guessed it, her mouth. I did try to invent some things for her hoof so she could write, but it seems writing with her mouth is more natural than moving her hoof around. One thing that troubles me with her, though, every day she sits at a window looking outside. I'm not worried about her being seen by passerbys. I live on a dead-end street, so that's the least of my worries. Still, though she hasn't said anything to me yet, I can see the hunger for fresh air in her eyes. I really can't keep her in here her entire life. <laughs> I keep talking like she's going to be here forever. I know that isn't true. One day, someday, she'll return home. Whether that's a simple poof and she's gone, or perhaps through some other means. In my heart, I hope that never happens. But in my head, I know it will. It's just a matter of when. I do hope to get her outside sometime soon. I've been checking out some of the abandoned lots and former parks on my walks to and from work, seeing where the best location would be to take her. Funnily enough, it seems the field that I played at growing up was the best option. So that's when I decided I shall take her to the field. But how will I get her there? She's still relatively small, so I can hide her inside a jacket or something. Yeah, tomorrow's supposed to be a nice day anyway. I've been taking her to that old field for weeks in hopes that I could help her learn how to fly. There's this large tree there with branches sticking out over a grassy terrace. The perfect spot for her to practice. If she falls and I can't catch her, at least she'll have something remotely safe to land on. She fell a lot, and I knew she would. There were many scrapes, cuts, and bruises towards her goal, but finally, after many weeks of work, she did it. She flew. Now, it was only a short distance, about 50 feet or so, but still, she did it! She's a little scraped up, but she's beaming with pride. Another thing that had been brought to my attention. She asked me about having her own room, and I got to thinking and realized the house does have a spare bedroom. Though my parents had filled it with my old school stuff from my younger years, as well as several of my old toys. You know, she might enjoy them. Though she is getting older, I'm not sure how entertaining they'd be for her. But if she has her own room, I can get her her own things, so that she can feel somewhat normal. She is pretty smart for a filly and knows the difference between our species. However, she still knows nothing about her origin. She's just not ready yet. The only thing I can do is keep her happy. Today is a day for celebration, for today, my little Dashie got her cutie mark. She didn't even know what it was until I had explained it to her. Now she's even more ecstatic than before. It was just a normal field outing, but this time she decided she wanted to see how high she could get in an attempt to gain speed from the fall. All the right things factored for her, how she positioned herself, her mental focus, and possibly me on the ground watching and cheering. But she did it. I knew you could break the sound barrier, but to actually do the rainbow part two, 
My mind was blown. So the initial explosion caused a ton of broken windows and set off car alarms in the next county. We rushed home before anyone could arrive at the field. I was lucky. None of my windows were broken. Though that was her highlight of the day, mine was just moments ago. She has now come accustomed to sleeping in her own room versus with me out on the couch. Now I can sleep in my own bed once more. But I do keep the door unlocked, so if she needs me, she can come get me. I had just tucked her into bed and told her good night when she said it. Good night, Daddy. I love you. Good night, my little Dashy. For the first time, not only did she call me Daddy, which she has done on occasion, but she even said, I love you. I haven't moved for an hour now. I am so lost in thought. The few times she has called me Daddy, I didn't think anything of it. I could picture why she called me that. Being with her so much has made me accept it as part of taking care of her. But tonight, when she said those three words, the realization finally sank into my heart. I am her daddy, and quite frankly, I consider her my daughter. I think I've finally done it. I have broken my hard shell that had formed when my parents died. I've let a sweet little filly into my life. I gave her a home to live in, food to eat, and now a daddy to love. She has given me hope, love, compassion, and now something I thought I'd never utter. A daughter. I believe Dashi is now at her full size. Rounding in at about three feet tall, she's fully grown. Though she's only 10 years old according to my math, I believe she's actually closer to 14 or 15 in actual years. So we celebrated five missed birthdays. I got a new job, one that pays much more than my old one. Dashi even talked about getting a job, but then she remembered what I told her. The look on her face was heartbreaking. Luckily, I have a way to fix this. Due to the sheer size of the property, it involves a lot of cutting of grass. Tomorrow, I'll modify a lawnmower for her to use so that she can have a job. I'll even pay her so that she can buy her own stuff if she wants. According to the show, she was a weather pony, and I don't have her mess with Mother Nature unless it's a dire emergency, so there really isn't any job there for her. I don't know when, but I have the sudden feeling our time together is running out. All of this has been too good to be true. Today has to be the worst time of my life, even more than when my parents died. Dashi found out the truth before I could tell her myself. I remember I walked in from work with some groceries, set them in the kitchen, and walked into the living room. That's when I saw it. My heart sank. I knew that episode. How long? How long have you known about this? How long have you known about this? I sat down, turned off the television, and told her everything. I told her about the show, finding her, and answered any other questions she had for me. After our argument, she flew upstairs into her bedroom and slammed the door shut. An hour later, I went to check on her, but no response told me she'd flown off. I can only hope that she comes back. Or at least, if she doesn't, she stays away from any other people. All I can say to her at this point is that I'm sorry. I am so, so sorry. It's been three days since Dashi left. The night of her departure, I did something I hadn't done in a very long time. I went for a walk. I wasn't sure where I was going or how long I walked, but that's what I did.
sorry. I... I heard you. And I'm sorry, too. There she is. You have nothing to be sorry about. This is my fault. Simple as that. Dad, do... Do you still love me? Of course, Tashi. I've always loved you. I still love you, no matter what. Not even a small fight such as ours could ever change that. With some time, I'm sure she'll relax and settle down about her being in the cartoon. She is a smart mare and knows she is real, not that made-up cartoon pony from the show. I can only help to push her into believing that, and hope that she'll do the same for me. There is a point in every parent's life when they have to let their child go. On her 20th birthday, I had planned a special outing to go see a flight show. As we prepared to leave, there was a knocking at the door. Dash, go to your room. Uh, I'll, I'll be a moment. When I first saw the figure standing on my porch, I wasn't sure if I was dreaming or hallucinating. She stood there another second looking at me. I'm quite surprised. I had expected a little more resistance to us entering. Why? I know who you all are. Ah, so you do know then. That you are fictional characters from a children's TV show? Then yeah. Otherwise, why you're all here? I have no idea. Oh, I think you do know. My heart fell into the pits of my stomach. I did know, and she was straight to the point about it. Um, excuse me, sir, but from what we could figure out, Rainbow Dash should be here. Is she? She, um, yeah, she's upstairs in, in her room. Her room? Yeah, Dashie's in her room. I wasn't sure who was knocking and I didn't want her to be spotted. Dashie? <laughs> my, my, you're that friendly with her already? I wanted to punch that pony so hard right then. How she had responded? Friendly? That's not even the beginning of it. And I should be asking you ponies about what the hell you did. You see, my student... I know who she is. Would you just cut to the chase? Yes, of course. <clears throat> she was working on a spell to help the weather team with storm development. They had ended up making a slightly too large storm, and when Twilight had attempted to use her magic to dispel it, it shot a lightning bolt out to meet her horn. Rainbow Dash was unfortunate enough to be within reach of the blast, and it engulfed her. It sent her to here. We have arrived to retrieve her. Simple enough, I would imagine. Dad? Is everything all right? It was in that second that my heart stopped beating. Uh, excuse me, Sugar Cube. Did I just hear Rainbow call you... Dad? Do you care to explain? There was only one thing I could do. And I had to do it. But I knew I wouldn't like it. Dad? Yeah, Dashi, I'm coming up. Uh, we need to talk. Dashi! Hey, get away from me! You don't recognize me, do you? No, or any of you! Dashi. Take a seat, please, so I can talk to them. How long ago was she sent over here? Um, about 15 days ago. Why? Well, it's been a lot more time than that here. How long? 15 years. Huh? That don't explain why she don't know us. Well, that's the thing. When I found her, she was just a filly. Come again? From my math, I think she was no older than four or five years old. 
You mean to tell us that you've been taking care of Rainbow Dash for 15 years? Since she was a small filly? We, uh, that, uh, she is... I know it's not true. I think I understand the reason behind why Rainbow Dash had called you Dad. So, what's supposed to happen now? Well, it's quite simple. Twilight, do you still remember that memory spell from the Discord incident? I knew what was going on, what Celestia had in mind. She wanted Twilight to either erase Dash's memories or start from anew. No, please wait. Just give me a moment with her, please. It's all I ask since, uh, since this is the last time we'll see each other. Dashy, my little Dashy, I love you with all my heart. You have done wonders to open me up from the man I once was. You, you have brought me so much joy in my life. I can't possibly ever thank you for it all. These 15 years we have had together, talking, playing, flying, all those have been so special to me. I just wanted you to know that I will forever love you. If there is ever a problem that happens and you need me, don't hesitate to find a way to get me, okay? Do, do I ha have to, to go, Daddy? It's your actual home, Dashy. You don't belong here. But I belong here! With you! You have no friends or other ponies to relate to. I was only taking care of you until this time would come. But I never thought it would be this painful. I love you, Daddy. And I love you too, my little Dashy. I knew it was coming, and it hurt so much, but I knew it was right. It was what had to happen for her, for her friends, and in a twisted way for me. Wait, before I go, I want to get something. I knew she had realized this is how it must end. The box, from my guessing, was probably her most cherished items. Though it hurt me to think about it, I hoped she had a picture of us in there. I'm so sorry, Rainbow Dash. I... I honestly wish there was another way to do this. Just how could I blame anybody for sending Rainbow Dash here? I wish to thank you, Twilight, and the rest of you. Thank you for what you did, though not intentional. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, darling, for caring for our Rainbow Dash. Thank you. Um, th thank you. Are you ready now, Rainbow? Dad, for 15 years you took care of me. For 15 years you loved me, played with me, and made sure I enjoyed my life in a world not meant to house me. I'm not a mare of many words, but even though I told you this in person, I felt you needed a written version of it so you will know it was all real. I love you, Daddy. 
You helped shape me into the mare I am now. I'm not sure what's going to happen, if I will remember any of this or not, but I want you to know that you did a darn good job of raising me, even if I was a bit stubborn at times and short with during others. With Celestia's permission, I hope to allow you to keep our photos, our memories, with you so that you will never forget. Again, I love you, and thank you. Your little daughter always, your little Dashie forever, Rainbow Dash.